Okay, time for part two in our lecture on pointers. We're going to talk about the new operator. The new operator is going to let us dynamically allocate arrays, right? We don't have a way in C++ to have a variable size array. We've had to define their size at compile time. Well, we'll no longer have to do that. Well, now that we can use pointers and the new operator. All right, so the new operator is used to allocate memory quote, for an unnamed identifier. In other words, we're not going to have something called int array with a fixed size, say, of 10. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use a pointer to name that. All right. Right, and so we're not using the syntax of saying something like in x where x has a name, declaring a pointer to x, and then a storing the address of x and pointer to x. We're going to use this form here. So we declare a pointer. So this asterisk with the data type says, I'm declaring then a pointer. Right, I named it pointer to x. New operator says new, and then what data type do I want? Well, I want an integer. All right, so this is just going to give allocate memory for a single integer. Like I said, normally we're going to specify size uh, for arrays, but there will be other data types later where we may just want to allocate one of that type. So we always use the new operator, right? We have to then include, so pound include the new library. I've included IO stream in this example. So this is pointer example two that I uploaded uh, to Canvas. Right. So once again, the new operator creates a new dynamic variable of a specified type, and it returns a pointer that points to this new variable. So basically, we're going to allocate memory, and we'll have a pointer to the beginning of that area of memory. Right. So here's an example here. We're going to create a variable of type my type. Right. So here's a type my type, and then Asterisk P, P is the name of the pointer. The asterisk says make this a pointer to my type. And then we could just simply assign to P. We could use the word new and then the data type there. So that's just a generic form. Uh, I believe that your textbook was showing you. One thing you should know then is this memory gets allocated in what's called the free store or the heap. Uh, when we talked about functions, we talked a little bit about stack memory. Right. And stack memory space and heat memory space are separate memory spaces. Uh, they're in the shared space that your program's able to use, right? There is a finite quantity on your computer, but just know this goes into the uh, free store, or I'll refer to it as a heap. Your textbook is referring to it as the free store, right? Different area of memory, right, than the call stack, right? The C++ standard specifies that if there's not sufficient memory available to create the new variable, then the new operator by default terminates the program. All right, uh, one thing we'll want to do, I mean, that's a good thing that it terminates your program, but we will want to handle that. If our program was running and we had a fairly complex program and it just stopped running, we want an idea of where it stops running and why. So we'll want to learn how to handle those errors. All right, so let's go into an example here. I've said, let's declare a pointer and dynamically allocate memory for an int, right? Just a single integer, right? When we do this, using new in this way throws what's called a bad alloc exception if it fails to allocate storage. And there are try and catch blocks that you can deal with exceptions, right? That's in chapter 16 of the textbook and we're only currently in chapter nine, so we won't talk about try and catch here. Right. Uh, if we were to, like I said, if we were to do this, so we've declared a pointer to an int. Its name is ptr1 pointer1. New says just give us one int. So this would allocate memory for a single integer. Pointer1 would point to that area of memory. Right. We don't have any specific values stored in that yet. If the free store were full, if, if C++ was unable to allocate memory, our program would terminate. Right, by doing this this way. Right. Uh, so let's just go ahead then if we wanted to store some information there we would have to use the dereference operator so I'd have to say 
I'm going to refer to pointer one. And if I wanted to store, say, the value of 17 in there, right, we use the indirection operator with the pointer name, same way we did before when we uh, used the pointer to access memory. Let me just go ahead and do a run cursor. Right, so we can see this happening in the debugger. All right, and so this is from my previous example. These are no longer available. Let me delete them. All right, so over here in the locals, you can see we've got pointer one declared, right? It points to some area of memory. There's nothing, there's garbage stored in it, right? So until we execute this line of code, so I'll hit F10, right? Now that I hit F10, right, the memory address stays the same for pointer one. So you can see the data type for pointer one, PTR one is an int star, but what Visual Studio is showing you is the memory location this points to, what value is stored in there, and that value is an int type. You can see the number 17 is stored in there. All right. Now that we've started to use the new operator, we have to clean up after ourselves. Right? Any variables we declared previously were put on the call stack, and that was automatic, an automatic storage class. And when our functions ended, right, when, it, when we declared anything locally, that was taken care of for us. It was, it was put onto the call stack and it was removed from the call stack. Well, we now have to do our own cleanup, right? Sometimes it's referred to as garbage cleanup. But whenever we're done with any memory we've dynamically allocated, we call another operator delete, right? And so what that does is that deallocates de or it frees memory and we want to do that before our program ends. If we don't do it before our program ends, the term is called leaking memory. Our program has leaked memory. So we want to do it before the program ends, and we usually do it as soon as we no longer need the memory, right? And that frees up the memory resources in the operating system uh, so for our program, right, if we need the additional memory, right? Leaking memory is a bad thing. Eventually, the operating system will clean it up. Operating systems did not used to clean it up, so leaking memory, right, would sometimes actually cause an operating system, your computer, to stop running after you had leaked enough memory over time, right? You don't want to rely on the operating system to clean that up. You don't know exactly when it's going to be cleaned up. So like I said, whenever you're done with it, we free the memory, right? We deallocate it, and we do that with delete. So in this case, since we had a single integer, right, that we allocated, we just say delete. We use the name of the pointer, right? We don't use the indirection operator. We actually use the name of the pointer. That will free up the memory. All right. So let's take another look at another way we can uh, allocate memory. Here, I'm going to stop the debugger. All right. So down here, Right, this says to declare a pointer and dynamically allocate memory for an int. That's what we did up above. But we want to say, do not throw an exception if memory cannot be allocated. So remember I said up here, if memory can't be allocated, this throws what's known as a bad alloc exception. Right, if we don't catch it or handle it and it can't allocate it, our program will crash. Uh, well, our program will terminate. I'll say that our program will crash and we won't know why. What we're going to do until we learn how to use try and catch blocks is this is how we're going to allocate memory in class, right? So here I've declared a variable, a pointer variable, PTR2. It's a pointer to an int, right, int star. We're using the new operator and we're going to allocate an int, but in between, in, this has to go into parentheses, we have to say standard colon, colon, no throw. It's a constant. And that says do not throw an exception, right? So in other words, if this cannot allocate memory, it will not throw an exception. So what we need to do in our code is we need to check to see if the memory is allocated. So if this cannot allocate memory, what it will do is it will assign a null pointer or a null to this. So what we do to make sure memory is allocated is we say if name of the pointer equals null pointer, right? If that's true, that means memory wasn't allocated. Uh, so you can see in this example, I'm just printing out an error message saying memory allocation failed. And I'm just going to leave the program here. I'm just going to say return one, we're in main, so the program would terminate. Otherwise, we're going to say that memory was successfully allocated. 
just to give us an idea of this program is working correctly. And then down below here, all right, here's another example of how we can write to pointer two's memory, right? So after we allocate the memory, we still haven't stored any value in it. So let me just go ahead and let's uh, do a run to cursor here. All right. So this line executed, it should have allocated memory. Of, and you can see there's a memory address down here, PTR2. There's garbage in PTR2's memory. I'm just going to hit F10, right? That condition was false, so it comes down and if I hit F10 and I pop up the console, you can see we got the message, successfully allocated pointer two memory. So back over here now, if I hit F10, you can see now the area of memory to which PTR2 points has 1001 stored in it. And if I want to print out what's stored in that memory, so if I want to print out the value that's stored in the memory location to where PTR2 points, I use the indirection or dereference operator with that. And so we'll just, I'm going to hit F, oops, I'm going to hit F10, I hit F9. Uh, and so you can see here in the console, right, it printed out this message star PTR2 colon space. And then we use the dereference operator with that to access the value that's pointed to by that area of memory. And we've got the 1001. And of course, like a good programmer, right, we're going to clean up, we're going to delete that before our program terminates. All right, so actually, all right. And that red dot is I just accidentally added a breakpoint there that I don't want. And so I got rid of that. All right. That's it for the new operator. That was an introduction to new. All right. The important thing is, like I said, since we don't know how to handle try and catch it, those exceptions in this course, at this time, we are going to allocate memory with new standard no throw data type. And then we always need to check to make sure memory was allocated. If it's not allocated, it returns. So the new, the new function will return a null pointer if it fails to allocate that with this standard no throw option, right? So this is sort of an old school way we're doing this, right? If pointer two equals the null pointer, that means memory allocation failed. I wanna end my program in this particular case. Otherwise, then we printed out this message that memory was successfully allocated. All right, so remember this form, this is what you'll be using, so you'll want to refer back to this when you practice allocating memory. All right, that's the end of part two of the lecture. We will next talk about how we dynamically allocate memory for a